clearly meets all the dimensional requirements. The setbacks for the house, the house is in the middle of the 45 acres, which is, is clearly meets all the setbacks. Um, as for uh, the traffic, um, I, I know there's a traffic uh, issue. He indicated in his, in his application that uh, he'll, there will actually be a lot less traffic. One of the primary reasons he drives right now is to drive to and from my sister's house on the other side of Leeds. Um, he drives his bike to work, but he drives to and from her house to pick up the grandkids and go see the grandkids a couple times a day. So that, that won't be necessary anymore because he'll be living across the street. So I think he's, he's actually reducing traffic by, by doing this. Um, but for all those reasons, we'd ask you, we'd ask you all to approve this uh, approve the flag lot, allowing this uh, lot to be created that <coughs> meets all, the, the, the new lot that's being created that he's building on actually, like I said, conforms to all the regulations. So just, I, and then we were talking earlier, but not about this, uh, but I live in Leeds, and I'm just, you said across the street a couple different times, I'm trying to make sure I understand. So you're coming up Chesterfield Road from town, yep. start to go up the hill, this is all on the right. But, no, up the hill is all on the left. Up the left, okay. That's what I, I was confused about which side of the street you started on, just so when you Okay, right, this is yes. all on the left. All on the left. Okay. I, I was thinking you were coming down there. Oh, okay. The Melman Solar Farm is on the right. Right, that's what, yeah, that's the, that's right. the landmark. Yes. And, yes. <laughs> that's, so this is across the street from that. A little up the hill. A little across, across the street. Okay, I, I was just getting my orientation. <clears throat> I don't know if you have any questions. So at the 30 feet you mentioned, looking at the plan, it's, um, it, that's not the frontage on Chesterfield. No, that's the, that's the stem of the flag. It's, 100, it's 158 feet of frontage right. on the flag block. I think there's a requirement that it can't be any more than, what, 300? <clears throat> Yeah, so you're, you're saying to us that your stem is 30, 30 feet right. instead of 300. The, the minimum frontage is, I think, 50 feet, but we have 158. Right. I hear you on the issue about parking, but I think we sort of set precedent about, I mean, not parking, but transportation, about how we treat new curb cuts. Uh, so I. I'd be interested in us discussing whether, I mean, it is reasonable, I, I get your logic that there can be less travel, but we just have in the past always set uh, the precedent for how to treat <coughs> new curb cuts into a road. Um, because once you build that house, it's not just senior that's going to live there, it becomes a house for uh, young folks and all other people later on. So I'm sure I'd want to talk about that. With is, there, is, there, is there any room for discussion on that issue or mm -hmm. is it yeah I no mean, it's so you can impose it or not impose it or is that one of these things where we just the rules there and we have to enforce it? no i think it's a discussable point because this is a special permit so i think it's out to, you know he's he's asking for for our consideration of the overall project but the exceptions yeah. have been places where somebody can't change their mind later <coughs> so bear hill is age restricted housing and so you guys get a reduction in the amount of traffic mitigation of Bear Hill would be. This is different, as Devin said, because uses can change. You know, the, you know, the IT figures are 10 trips per day. Some of that is service deliveries. A lot of it is sort of things that go on that someone driving less has only some small effect in future owners are going to have them. So unless you're going to sort of change the whole formula, unless there's some sort of deep research that says it can only be for someone who's retired, it can only be something like that, I don't think you'd want to start so there isn't a new curb cut though, is there? Because they it's, it's for a new house. That's right. It's not the curb cut. That's the Thank question. You. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to add one more thing. I can let it speak for himself, but the, the, the only neighbor here I think that's really affected is Joe Mosterka, who's, who's here in the audience today. He lives right here. And I can let him address you. Like, I don't think he, well, he just told me he didn't have a problem with this. But. Yeah, we'll, we'll take the yeah. public comment. Um, any other questions before we do that? Pretty straightforward? Yeah, mm -hmm. very much so. Nod from everybody. Public comment? We'd love to hear from you, sir. Yes, as, as Patrick said, I am uh, probably the only butter that's affected by it. 
And I've talked to Pat Sr. and he's got me informed of what he's doing and I have no objection to to it. Uh, in fact, I wish him luck with that and everything. I, the only reason I'm here today, I was surprised when I received a notice that there, uh, there, there was a special permit involved and it said a flag lot. And I said, I, I didn't under, quite understand what the flag lot was at so. all. But I have no objection to the way he's uh, subdividing the lot for his new building lot. Thank, Thank you. you. Story. I, I think this is very clean. Uh, the only issue is the traffic mitigation, which. Yeah. Um, we, we did get an email from Pat Melnick Sr. saying, yes, he'd prefer to pay less, but he's willing to. I mean, right. that's what the board requires. He's willing right. To I, I think it's unique because it's out of the town, it's on a rural road, Chesterfield Road, and so. Think traffic mitigation three thousand dollars is that yeah. make a lot of sense? But to Wayne's point, and to your point earlier, you know the, the house that is now for for an elderly or retired couple in in fifteen years might be um, you know six teenagers and and, and you know, whatever it is, and a bunch of parents and a bunch of dogs and trips all over the place. So who knows? And so there's a rule in place. I think we need to apply it. Um, so. One other way to think about this is Chesterfield Road is my example of a street that is doing its own traffic calming device. So <laughs> that, uh, that's really what you know what we're trying to do is build up ways to fix roads. It's so right. obvious. Um, and so people drive there all the way to other places where there's more congestion. So even Chesterfield Road doesn't need sidewalks. <laughs> other places do. So uh, there, there were two comments for conditions. One is prior to the issuance of a certificate of occupancy for the newly created lot, the applicant must address traffic mitigation as required by 11.6 is offered uh, with a one-time payment in lieu of application making modifications to the network to be made to the city of Northampton for an amount of $3,000. And the second uh, comment is prior to submitting the A&R, for this proposed lot, the applicant must meet the criteria for releasing the property out of Chapter 61, which I'm sure you expected. It's actually 61A. Okay, thank you. Um, it's all under 61A, which is agricultural. Uh, there's there's uh, no notice requirement under 61A for the transfer. Uh, there is going to be a rollback tax, but there's no transfer uh, fee under the 61A requirements. Right. So it, it's allowed. It's allowed as a right to transfer to a family member. So. And so, yeah, it's like you understand school. you would do you would need to do that before you could get the um, A and R for the proposed new lot. You know, yeah, upon your approval, he, he intends to pay the rollback tax. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, do I hear a motion with those conditions? Could just yeah, please. And I guess the back to where Mark started, but I'm just having trouble envisioning in this particular place. Why someone's got to pay three thousand dollars for traffic mitigation? <laughs> I'm just statistically, suburban homes and homes further out drive far more. So we have an average rate based on where sidewalks are, but we would expect, based on historical patterns, that this has to be generating more than ten trips per day and at least one afternoon trip per day, and that's what our fee is based on. So outline here is general. Yeah, you because know, you think about it, if you go from here, right? You got you got to, to downtown. Right? You got to go. And no matter where you go, you got to drive. Or, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So there's more, more next yeah. Sure. Any uh, more discussion? Wait, no. oh, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, the traffic mitigation. The money isn't segregated in any way as to be used on Chesterfield Road or in Leeds or any particular place. It has to have some connection to the project. So we couldn't use this money for something downtown. We could certainly use this money for something on Spring Street. That must require some phenomenal software to keep track of all the traffic mitigation money paid in and how the money in, money out, where it's used. Yeah, we have, a simple, we have a spreadsheet. Yeah, we have a spreadsheet that shows sort of where all the money comes from and how we, we track it by project. So we tend to lump them together for like the um, the project of Reservoir Road is lumped together with Grove Ave because that's close enough to have sort of the same story. So we lump sort of by area. Not, not for instance, by the Chesterfield Road, which badly needs some. Uh, right, so Chesterfield work. Road and Spring Street, it could probably be used in either of those spots. Again, we wouldn't use it somewhere far away from those two. So it wouldn't be $3,000 when 
fix one pothole. Right. That's why we tend to. That's why we tend to put them together so we can tell a story. And if the city ever decides to work on Trustfield Road, is this three thousand dollars thrown in? Or? It can. We tend not to do it for repair, which we're funded with Chapter ninety money anyway. So we tend to do cap improvements that are actually going to mitigate the extra traffic. Um, so we look at intersections, but then often we use the money for design and then leverage just somebody, someone, else, someone else's money. Um, it so just seems like a $3,000 amount of money w would not fix anything. It doesn't by itself, but that's why I say it, we, it adds up. And we sometimes you design separately. And you could do a little bit of sidewalks as the bricks and mortar type things. You could do little curb stuff, but it tends to be designed, you know, for this sort of small project, it tends to be designed. Um, and, and the small ones tend to stick around longer. So, you know, King Street, where we get a few hundred thousand dollars, we can do a separate project that has it. The small ones tend to wait till there's a bigger story that, that has it. We don't have a problem spending the money. We'd like to have more money, but we don't have a problem spending it. And I forget the ordinance. Is, is the $3,000 mandatory? The so has? our first choice, the reason it's technically a payment in lieu of is our first choice is for applicants to make improvements. Um, so Walgreen, for example, built a bike path through their property and gave the city the easement for it. That's always our preference because then money happens immediately. Most often for big projects they do that. For small projects they don't. The Attorney General recently ruled that anything within the public right of way that has any public benefit has to now go through prevailing wage and public bidding. So the likelihood, so it used to be maybe half the projects the applicant made themselves and half they gave us cash. My guess we're going to see more cash and less projects because the cost has suddenly gone up for these projects. Mm -hmm. um, but the process is exactly the same. It's totally up to the applicant what they do. Applicants tend to make the improvements when they want the improvement anyway. So Stop and Shop built a bike path through, the, through their property <coughs> because they actually wanted the bike path and they got credit for it. So, the, so it's that kind of thing. So, so the, I'm not sure if they ever had someone for three thousand dollars who makes the improvement themselves, but they could. I'm somewhat inclined to take a vote just to make sure that we have an agreement among us that this uh, this condition should be added to the motion. So, can I just get a, a nod or a show of heads? Uh, yeah. well, which condition? Well, uh, <coughs> are we comfortable with the three thousand dollar traffic mitigation? Uh, all those in favor? Yes. Opposed? Okay, if you're not going to redo mitigation, you all need to sort of show why this is unique and ask me something that's a permanent thing. So, I think, so it's not that you can't, you know, they say for Bear Hill Estates, you didn't require it. Lathrop's going to be coming in soon, and they're probably not required. But you have to show why is it different here. It, it just seems to me, I mean, Chesterfield Road is, is not a very busy road. Bear Hill Bridge Road, I mean, I guess we allowed an exception there, but I'm a little bit surprised because it is such a congested, busy area. But um, and I don't think we can rewrite the rules on it tonight. But uh, to me, it's just kind of a, a a bit of a backhanded way for the city to um, add to this fund. Um, it, it doesn't seem right that. <coughs> people in Chesterfield Road or all these rural areas have to contribute to this fund. It's, uh, so let me go back and give, let me go back in history. That this might be helpful. So it used to be the old standard was you only had to contribute to our fund if your project was in essence the straw that broke the camel's back. So because your project comes in, we need a traffic signal. Because your project comes in, we need to do the intersection. And the problem with that is that man, it was incredibly lumpy. Nobody pays, nobody pays, nobody pays, and suddenly someone has to pay $300,000 to redo an intersection. So city council with planning board support said, let's not just look at projects that break an intersection, let's look at this tiny incremental impacts. And as you say, $3,000 does nothing, but $3,000 is a little more traffic going down Reservoir Road or Spring Street, which at some point, you know, think for example at Spring Street and Meadow Street. That's a very dangerous intersection, <coughs> we should be doing something. No, there's never going to be a subdivision that's going to be right at that spot that's going to break the intersection. But this will add on an average 10, 10 cars a day, and that intersection needs to, needs to be focused on. And so that, that was the idea of the thing. Yeah, he's not doing much for that intersection, but he's adding a few cars a day through there. Um, 
and that's why I say those places that are most rural, that have the most instinct that we shouldn't be charging, are the ones that are doing the most amount of driving, right? So the average per the further out you are, the more miles, vehicle miles traveled there are doing it. And so that was the change, I think, 10 or 12 years ago to, to get those incremental changes. And I think it actually led to a reduction of fees we're getting, because we no longer tell a developer about 30 lot subdivision, you have to spend $200,000 on that. Your explanation <clears throat> wouldn't make sense, of course, but I keep thinking that this house is going to generate a substantial amount of real estate taxes, and one would expect that some part of that would go towards maintaining the roads. Um, and I don't know, I, I agree with Bill. I, I, I know we're, we have to follow the rules, but it, it seems like just another way for the city to put its hand out and get some money. So again, the theory behind it is everybody's paying real estate taxes to pay for ongoing maintenance. I mean, as a practical matter, we almost never pay for roads with real estate taxes. And most of our roads are for Chapter 90 money. This year, the mayor's project for doing potholes is one of the first times we've done real estate taxes in a long time. And so the idea is new homes should be paying their, their fair share of that existing piece that everybody else's taxes have been doing for years. It just seems like if I, and in this location on Chesterfield Road, maybe it doesn't make sense, but on a different location on Chesterfield Road, does it make more sense? Or on Spring Street, does it start to make sense? Or what road, where do you, and, and who makes that decision? Well, this street is busy enough that traffic mitigation makes sense, but these roads out here, you know, it doesn't make sense. I think you need to be consistent. And, and $3,000 in this giant stretch of road maybe doesn't make a lot, but you lump it together and you clean up an intersection, if that makes sense. Yeah, and I think that's, you know, my initial question, but I think that's the, lo you know, if we have, if this is the, the logic, that's the only way the logic works. I think that's the, you know, that's the, the thing for me. I, I think I would, my inclination was, I think actually like, yeah, this just doesn't make sense, but it only works if you have both those parts. And I, I think that's what you know, makes sense. I admit it is hard to understand from your side of this discussion how we can take one residential project that's in a non-dense area of town and, and argue about traffic mitigation money. But I do think it makes sense to have a plan where you can build up enough funds in a city account that can do the design work to leverage state funding for actually doing major <coughs> changes. Yeah, I guess, you know, I guess this is the way we're doing it, but you know, there, there would seem to be a more fair basis, you know, based on, uh, you know, part of your vehicle tax or a mileage tax or something like that versus a curb cut. Um, well, but these but are developments. They are the growth of the community. That's where the increase comes from in, in my mind. So, Which is why it's also one time. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> um, and uh, I, I know they faced the idea of what it will cost to build a new house, but this will be less than 1%. <laughs> so, um, all right, well, I wanted to have that discussion. Um, I am sensing agreement to leaving that condition on the motion. Um, do I have that motion? So we need to close public hearing. Uh, thank you, Mark. Um, uh, so moved. Mark, we to close uh, bill. Uh, second to and so we close public here. Thank you. Um, any more discussion? Yes. Motion to approve special permit um, for five lot on Chesterfield Road with the following two conditions prior to issuance of certificate of occupancy for newly created lot. The applicant will address traffic mitigation um, by providing payment in the amount of three thousand dollars. And prior to submitting ANR, applicant will meet criteria for releasing property out of 61A, including request for submitting a grant right of refusal. Second. Mark seconds. All in favor? Yes. Thank you, Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Did, Did you see the first? I said the, the 61A, right of first? but that's a. Uh, There's no right of first refusal. In 61A? In 61A. Strike the second condition. Struck. We'll meet the criteria of the yes. 61A, but there's right. no first very first. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck with that. You'll have a whole comp down now. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> um, two other things on the minutes on, on the agenda for tonight. Uh, approval of the minutes. So moved. Second. 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 Second.
Stables where Grove Avenue leaves West Street. Okay. So I'm sorry, who made Can you make a note that I would accuse myself? Yes. Thank you. John has moved to approve it. Second. Tess has seconded it. All, yeah. all in favor. I'm confused. <laughs> I'm so easily confused. You shouldn't try. Okay. Okay. So. <laughs> The other one, this is right downtown. In downtown, we have no minimum lot size and no frontage requirement and no dimensional requirements. So it makes it pretty straightforward. Um, this is on Hampton Avenue. This is be, be next to the brewery. Um, there's a tiny transfer that's in measured in a few square feet going from the brewery to maybe during the building or maybe it's the other direction. But again, it doesn't matter how big or how small the lots are still going to be. Curiosity gets me as to why somebody would want to move just that small amount of ownership. I assume it's an encumbrance or there's some utilities. I don't know the answer, but okay. you know. mm -hmm. I don't really have to know. Bill moved, we approved that ANR yeah. mark. Second. <laughs> All in favor? <laughs> I just want to point out how good I am at keeping your meeting short. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Don't jinx yourself. But are we sure it's going to come out right? <laughs> yeah. Don't jinx yourself. Uh, Dan, you motion to adjourn. Second. And seconded it. All in favor of a departure at 740. Oh.